All right, now I want to start manipulating and controlling the position of these elements in 3D space so we can create effects like depth of field and so on. So to do that, let's go and click on this viewport. I'll hold Shift and hit the 4 key. Now we're looking down. We're from the top view, looking down on our scene again. I can hold spacebar control and zoom in. And as I select any one of the layers, you're gonna see the manipulator again appear and I can start to control its position in Z space very easily. I'll hit control Z just to undo that for right now. And I mentioned it earlier, but I'll just reiterate it. You see the camera there. Let me go and move over here and drag my camera over by the other nodes. You only see the camera highlighted when you have it selected. If I deselect it by clicking again in an empty space, you'll see the representation of the camera is still there. It's just not highlighted. It does not mean the camera is turned off. The camera is still active. It's just the workflow. When you select something, that becomes the highlighted object. Now, since I'm going to be manipulating my layers in 3D space, very often I like to take advantage of the multiple view layouts that Flame offers us. We saw these inside the batch environment. We were building our composite, but here's where you really can take advantage of them inside the action tool. I'm going to choose the three up split. Now I have three different views to look at my action scene. I'll select the top view, which is currently showing me my batch schematic. Because the action tool is selected, I can hit the tilde key and it will step into the action schematic. This view over on my left hand side is showing me the end result of my comp. That's good. That's what I want to see. This view though, I'm going to set this one to be back to looking down on my scene. So shift four brings me back to my top view. And again, I'll zoom back a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Also, since I'm going to be working on my clouds layer first, I'm going to enable solo. So inside the end result, I'm not gonna see the other layers while I manipulate its position and its scale. So I wanna take the Z position and start dragging it back in space. I know for a fact that I want it to be at negative 600. So I'll just come down to the field where it's for Z for our position and put minus 600 and hit enter. Now in all honesty, I just want to use this lower left corner of this clouds image as part of my background. So for the scale, proportion is on, which means if we adjust one parameter, all parameters will follow suit. I'm going to set this to 185. And then in this viewport, in our end result, let's zoom back so we can see the outline of the actual image. And now I can take it and start manipulating its X and Y to get just that lower corner inside of the viewing area. If you want to enter an exact amount for the X, I'll put 1315. And then for my Y, I'll enter 735. So it's lining up exactly on the corner of my frame. Now I want to start working on the next image, but I want to be able to see the clouds background while I do that. So I'm going to disable solo and I'll just region select our image up here, the top one, and hit H to hide that. And holding the option key, I'll select the clouds image and just move that node off to the side so it's out of my way. I'll make sure I have the axis for that image selected and I want to bring it back in Z space also. I can use again the top view or go and use my position settings down here. I'll enter a negative 460 for this. The next thing I want to do is I want to flip this image. There's a couple different ways we can do that. Obviously I can rotate it or a simple trick is to set my X scale to a negative 100. Before I do that, I will turn off proportional, then I'll click inside of the X field for the scale and enter minus 100 and click enter. Now you'll see we flipped that image. I will enable proportion once again. So I wanna scale this up to about 110%. So depending upon what field you enter, whether the one's negative or a positive value, make sure you put the right information. I will click in the Y for the scale and enter 110 and click enter. So now I've scaled that layer up. And then I wanna adjust its X position. So I can grab the manipulator right inside the viewport. I wanna be about a minus 95, a negative 95. So I'll click in the field to get our calculator and enter negative 95 and click enter. Now I wanna adjust its X position. I wanna move it over a little bit. I want the X position to be somewhere around negative 195. 
So if I want to be very precise, again, I click in the field for the X, negative 195, enter. Then I'll grab the Y, and I'm just going to drag this down. I want this to be about a negative 300, somewhere in that vicinity. Obviously, you do not have to have these exact parameters. Let's keep in mind that all the adjustments that I'm making were artistic decisions that were made by the artist Joel Osis, who originally worked on this comp, as he was building and experimenting with how he wanted the background to look. As long as you're close to the values, your end result should be the same as mine and similar to what he did. Next, we're going to start working on this image. So let me region select this with Control. I'll hit the H key to unhide it. And I'm just going to hold Option and move it over to here, just for organization. So I've got my clouds, I've got my mountain, and I've got what looks like the entrance of a castle and built in some rocks or something. So the last thing I'll do as far as this video is I want to flip this image, but this time I'm going to adjust the Y rotation value for this image to 180, and that's going to flip our image. All right, in the next video, we're going to start looking at the masking tools inside of Action.